Marx theorized that the process of free market capitalism and wealth in society is founded on an exploitation of workers. He accused the capitalist bourgeois as the oppressors of the proletariat working class. He believed that his system would create paradise and relieve suffering on earth, but in practice it has been the theoretical foundation of a theory for the most murderous societies in the history of the world. Historian Paul Johnson, in his book titled Intellectuals, makes a case that in any situation when a philosopher or intellectual comes up with a theory, we should always judge it by their own lives, by their morals and values and life's progression. Can one come up with a new world order, an economic theory, a value and morally correct theory, if they themselves are not proof in their own pudding? Just like we would reject a diet book written by an obese author, or a mentor who helps with business coaching, but has never built a business, Johnson argues that we first need to look at the people and the way these people live their lives, to understand whether their thesis has any real truth. One of the most glaring examples of Marx's hypocrisy is his own economic troubles. Despite his insistence on the importance of workers' rights and fair wages, Marx himself struggled financially for much of his life. He was dependent on the financial support for his family, and then of his friend Friedrich Engels, who provided him with a steady income that allowed him to focus on his writing and activism. In fact, much of Marx's work was only made possible through Engels' financial assistance. While writing about the idle bourgeois gaining wealth by not lifting a finger, for most of his life Marx too did this, and in fact never had a job. Marx and Engels collaborated together throughout their writing careers. They became the voices of communism. Both were youthful offspring of privileged classes, yet called themselves the proletariat. As Paul Johnson writes, nothing appeals to intellectuals more than the feeling that they represent the people. Nothing, as a rule, is further from the truth. Marx was not particularly successful in his own attempts to earn a living. He failed as a journalist, a teacher, and a lawyer, and even struggled to make ends meet as a freelance writer. His mother said that she wished Karl would accumulate some capital instead of writing about it. Tragically and ironically Marx's own economic struggles highlight the disconnect between his theories and his own personal actions. While he preached the importance of economic equality and the redistribution of wealth, he relied on the support of a wealthy friend and was unable to achieve financial stability on his own. When evicted from home in Chelsea for not paying rent, the Marx's beds were sold to pay the milkman, baker, butcher. He took from the worker class but did not pay them for their work. Marx never paid his maid, Helen de Muth, a penny. She was essentially the family's slave. Marx did not just exploit his workers, but stole from them. This stands in stark contrast to his advocacy for the labor movement. Furthermore, Marx's personal life was also marked by hypocrisy. Despite his calls for the abolition of the family and the end of traditional gender roles, he himself led a very traditional life. He was married to his wife Jenny von Westphalen for over 30 years and had seven children with her. Moreover, he relied heavily on his wife for emotional support and domestic labor, which contradicts his claims that women should be freed from the constraints of domesticity. His daughters were not permitted to be educated. One of the most significant health problems Marx faced was his dependence on alcohol. Marx struggled with alcoholism and is said to have consumed large quantities of beer, wine, and spirits regularly. This habit led to a host of health problems, including liver damage and chronic bronchitis. Additionally, Marx was also known for his poor personal hygiene, which contributed to his persistent boils and carbuncles. These painful abscesses made it difficult for him to sit or sleep comfortably and caused him a great deal of discomfort throughout his life. These inconsistencies in Marx's life are clear examples of how Marx's hypocrisy undermines the credibility of his ideas. So can Marx lecture mankind on virtue? To what extent does one have to have it together to be a moralist? One could argue, just maybe a little more together than Marx.